Hey everyone, I hope you are all well. Today I'm going to be making a video about why I moved to Iceland. This is the long awaited video. Guys, I'm so sorry I procrastinated on this one. I guess it took me being out in the sun to actually explain to you why I moved to this Arctic place. Currently not in Iceland, I'm actually in England. But I thought I would just get on and film this video because I have the opportunity. I've just I'm just doing a mass filming, um, <laughs> a mass filming session. I've just filmed four videos, and this is the fifth and last one. Okay, so why I moved to Iceland? I started thinking about Iceland approximately nine months, or approximately just over nine months before I, um, you know, officially boarded the plane. So I moved to Iceland on in, in, uh, towards the end of September 2017, last year, and I started thinking about Iceland the end of 2016. It just had such a place in my heart. Even though I had not officially made my decision and I was planning to uh, visit Sweden in Mar March or something with my sister, Iceland just had a place in my heart, a lingering place. Like not an official place, just a lingering place. And I was just thinking like how cool it would it be to be in Iceland. I think I was just so much more captivated with the idea of Iceland than actual Iceland itself. It took me a while to even Google pictures. Approximately nine months before I my, my plane was booked, I had this inkling on, of an idea to move to Iceland. I wanted to move to a country where another language would be spoken. So I was thinking about Sweden, all the Nordic countries. I was thinking about Sweden. Norway, Denmark, not so much Finland, where else? Faroe Islands, Iceland, and I think Switzerland was also in there as well because of language. So it was the language, it was the nature, and I also needed to work on my health. I was in a place where I had quit my job at the end of February last year and I was just in transition. I was just like, how can I get to where I need to be? You know, I wanted to be in a better place because that job was just not really for me. It gave me this immense amount of freedom to travel and to just to film and to just really like be productive. But at the same time, I needed things such as higher salary and also um, more fulfillment. So that is why I decided to quit that job. I was thinking of how I could make other things work and I just found it extremely hard and that threw me into a very depressive state. But I never stopped being productive. The only thing I probably did was basically put on weight. I put on weight because I was not valuing myself. I was literally in a physically bad place. I just wanted to get that my meals over and done with and so that resulted in me putting on weight that um, I didn't really want to. I'm not going to insert pictures or anything but like maybe when I eventually get to where I need to be I'll show a transformation. Like it was really bad because I couldn't get this my hands on this job that I wanted and so I guess I started hurting myself through eating badly and so this is why I needed to get to Iceland. I just needed to get away because every time I had a gym member and I used to actually go to the gym I used to use my gym membership but the problem was that whenever I was in the gym I was actually speaking very bad negative words and so even though I would get to the gym I would get so crest is it crestfallen I don't know if that's a word yes downcast yes yeah, so even though I was going into the gym I would start running I would start get exercising and then I would start thinking of all the negative things about myself thinking I'm just a failure and I just needed to get back to a point of confidence and a point of success and a point of okay maybe not point of a point of success because success is ongoing I guess but I was just I was just treating myself so badly that I needed to escape I cannot operate properly in a bad space. That is why I choose sometimes to come out in nature to film. I guess I really wasn't in the right space physically. I was also dealing with inadequacy and thinking I'm not good enough and I just like I was beating myself up and then I finally signed up to go to this school again it was like a recruitment school yeah I won't talk about them too much but maybe I will make a separate video talking about them so after I finished that school or that course which was um, about two months or three months long altogether I booked my exam in Reykjavik once I knew I was coming of course I started thinking like you know my, this job isn't coming these people have promised to help me find a job like I've actually paid these people a lot of money thousands of pounds but like I said I do not want to talk too much about them 
now I didn't really have a lot of money because I just like I said I just spent a lot of money on that course and um, I wasn't even working for a few months but then I had just enough money to book a flight and have a little bit for when I arrived so I realized that there would never be a perfect time so I chose now I've been thinking about the move for a long time for months on end and I just realized you know what Tabby just go ahead and book your ticket so I booked with EasyJet because I found that they were like I think the most affordable and I was familiar with them so I booked with them and I just added on some extra weight 23 kilos uh, kilograms not kilos <laughs> 23 kilograms and I packed uh, I started actually minimizing. I started actually minimizing my possessions so that I would take away most of my things. I had actually been slowly progressing towards this moving decision because I had actually been minimizing my possessions all year. I had been giving away to charity shops, giving away to my sister, um, throwing old stuff that I did no longer needed away and it just really helped with me getting on with this decision to actually move um, i feel like sometimes when you have so much stuff it's almost like no i can't move i have i have this i have what about my car i've got to take care of my car what about my house what about my piano what about all these things all these possessions that you have and it, it kind of holds you back from moving because you're just like no i need to stay and babysit all my possessions but then if you don't have many possessions then it's like oh i'm free i don't have anything weighing my shoulders down i don't have anything weighing me down i can just move and it can be very swift it can be very uh, it can be an easy process i guess me kind of moving was gradual in my mind i was getting myself mentally prepared last year i had not traveled at all like i'd not actually done any like solo trips like i'd done the previous years i was just so focused on on deciding where to live i just wanted to decide exactly where i go and i told myself the next place I travel to, I will live in. And I went to Sweden with my sister in March. I vlogged that actually. It's called, the vlog is called A Weekend in Sweden. It's a very kind of easy, kind of like a, a very slow, chilled weekend. It was very nice actually. It was just very simple. That was not really holiday, holiday. That was just like such a nice, calm time. But after that, I told myself, I am not going anywhere. The next place I go, I must live. Okay, so my position keeps changing because the light and the sun keeps changing. So sorry about that. But I just want to get this video done in the best possible way. I felt like Iceland was a very mysterious place and I was just so taken with the idea of it but also intimidated by the force of nature in Iceland so as much as I was in awe and admiration of Iceland I was also a little bit scared of it it kind of did actually give me something to look forward to but at the same time I was just <gasps> intimidated but still fascinated you know when you're actually scared of something but you're enticed at the same time so i was a bit scared before i moved to iceland not because of the, it would be cold not because i'd be in a foreign land not because um i wouldn't know anybody but just because i was just scared of the nature but then i realized actually you just have to be careful and not like stand on the edge of a cliff or just stand underneath a waterfall or just you know just try to be careful so although i was working in a hotel which allowed me to go on free tours and excursions it took me like four months before i even took advantage of it so during that time i was quite depressed and quite frustrated and like without a job or like without a job that i really wanted um i was just like dreaming of like nordic countries and i knew that nobody could steal this passion away from me and i didn't even want to talk about it to anyone because i felt like I felt like it was my gem. I started holding this idea of moving away very close to my heart, very close to my heart, and then further in my heart, I was holding this idea of moving to Iceland. And I felt like it was my gem once again, my gem, my gem, my ruby. Of course, if I was going to live in Iceland, I needed to find a means of supporting myself. So I was thinking um, of becoming an au pair or doing a cultural exchange or something of the sort. And then when the time of my flight um, started to come closer, I started to consider finding a job that's when i typed in youtube how to find a job in iceland and then that's how i found my job basically by following the same 
steps I tried to make my application appealing which I believe it was which is why I ended up living there and getting the job which was really helpful and I always thank my line manager for giving me that job so when I moved to Iceland I didn't have a lot of money like I mentioned I think I had a hundred pounds and I, some of you may say oh like why would you move to an expensive country if you don't have any money well that's what you do when you have a dream and you have a when you have a, an idea when I get an idea when I get a conviction I must follow through I must follow through and I had to do it I had my ticket booked my plan was like I said to become an au pair I was told to book one night in a hotel or hostel one night accommodation I did that and then things were going really slowly so then I booked another night this is where things get a bit sad <laughs> so okay so yeah I had somewhere to stay for a couple of nights but then I realized I can't afford this I was already in the country and I was like actively looking for a job all the time I was actively like, searching for what would actually make make it work for me in Iceland I had a bit of a hard time and I will tell you this story so like I said I only had like 100 pounds or something and I paid for the first night in the hostel that was like 20 pounds pay for the second night that was like 20 pounds and then I realized I can't afford this well I knew I wouldn't be able to afford longer but I didn't plan on staying there longer but I ended up staying there longer so I went to the owner and I told them look I can't afford this um, basically I need you to allow me to stay here for free please in exchange for me working for you I would offer my services to you my digital marketing services and promote this business um, two potential clients and he agreed he told me what kind of clients he would like I did my research day in day out uh, you know I just kept working on it every day and I showed him my progress a week or something later he got drunk I'd already started working so of course I was quite busy basically us in the hotel hotel staff um, in the reception we get to try new restaurants and they always invite us and give us restaurant vouchers and invite us for dinner and stuff like that so that night we were trying out a new restaurant in town basically that night I, I was getting ready and I went downstairs in the hostel and he saw me and he was like Tabitha get out he just told me to get out he was drunk and he was sitting with these two German guys and he was like trying to be the big man and he just told me to shove off basically he got drunk and he told me to get out I said to him look give me till midnight because I want to go to the dinner I want to come back and leave at midnight he told me no get out now and so I had no choice luckily all my things were already packed I just carried them and uh, and left <laughs> and so I went luckily my workplace was only a couple minutes away so I went there with my suitcases it was kind of embarrassing and um, my line manager was actually texting me like are you coming to because we're having a meeting before we went to the dinner so you know about work things and it was just so embarrassing because like I had to hold back all my tears but I was there with my suitcases so what I did was I just left my suitcases up in the luggage room uh, in the hotel and uh, I went to dinner and we just had a nice dinner it was like I don't know how many courses but it was kind of posh kind of fancy so they served us all different kinds of dishes and this was a hard time like this is kind of a hard time kind of embarrassing because when I went to the restaurant the food was free of course but then we had to pay for drinks and I ordered a cocktail because I thought oh let me treat myself obviously I didn't have mo a lot of money I didn't because I was paying for things in Iceland but obviously I was using my UK card so things were going out two or three days after that was when they would get debited here when I got to paying I couldn't even pay for my drink I quickly asked my brother and sister to send me some money just so I could pay for my cocktail that was kind of embarrassing because I think they thought something was wrong with the machine but something was actually wrong with my balance bank balance <laughs> so oh, it's just terrible anyway I got over that I paid for it in the end like a couple minutes later when my brother and sister sent me some money and from then on I didn't really have anywhere to stay to live my boss was actually offering me but then I was too proud to accept so I just ended up staying with a friend one night and then leaving um, the next day and every day was a an adventure uh, from that point onwards because I was like where am I gonna sleep tonight where am I then it got to a point where I was like okay it looks like you're actually living in this hotel hostel 
hotels, hostels. You might as well stop booking for one and two nights, start booking for like one week. That was actually the day, like one day before my exam. We had that dinner one day and then I had my exam the next day. I had my the exam that I had scheduled the next day. So I passed the exam. Then I had to go and view an apartment somewhere that I could potentially be moving into so everything was just happening everything was just happening it was crazy um but luckily i ended up moving into that place and i met like so many different interesting people in these hostels people who were on holiday so obviously they were in a good mood having a good time i guess obviously i got my first paycheck i basically did not have money and it got to a point where i just had to swallow my pride and just ask ask for help that's what i did i started to feel a bit more peace because it was like where am I gonna get money from? So I asked my brother and I asked my sister and I asked my friend, three separate people. And my friend, she just said something so incredible. When I asked her, she was like, sure, I'm, I wanna keep this adventure alive. I just couldn't hang around in England anymore. I just like, I need to go. Iceland was the perfect place for me to go to because then a friend told me that, you know, look, there are loads of jobs in Iceland. You know, you can get a job tomorrow. And I was like, okay, this gives me hope. I guess I'm going to the right place. I knew that something good was gonna happen. It was just a case of being patient and waiting and just not giving up. So you see, sometimes when you have an idea or a dream or a vision or just something that you want to accomplish, you might just have to go through hard times, but after you go through those hard times, good times will come. And to me, I just saw every single difficulty as a hurdle. I saw it as a hurdle game, as like athletics, where I would just have to jump over them, jump over them, jump over them, jump over them. And I knew that as soon as I got over those hurdles, I would be standing on solid ground with my head held high and feeling happy and feeling accomplished. That is why I never gave up on my Icelandic dream. I felt like I just needed to be on that island. I needed to be in Iceland. I needed to take care of myself and that is exactly what I did. So if you feel like you really have an idea that you just need to execute, examine it. Maybe it's gonna be the best thing for you. Maybe, maybe you, you're gonna need people to help you. When you've made your decisions about where you wanna go, what you wanna do, the tools that you need will come and they will, they will help you along the way. And so that is why and how I moved to Iceland. It all started with a dream. It all started with an idea. It all started with a fascination. It all started with this island having a special place in my heart and from then on i just took action so if you're thinking of moving somewhere maybe you need to really consider it maybe you need to take that idea seriously and just start thinking of how it can be possible research read when i first started thinking about iceland i was just reading blog posts and reading the government websites and things that would i needed to know like legal stuff like am i even allowed to live in Iceland long term. I think if you are living in a country in the EU it should be easier for you than for example like American people or people in Africa, or Asia or other countries. Look into it, do your research. Now you know why I moved to Iceland. Maybe you thought it was going to be deeper like a lot of people seem to think oh maybe you fell in love. What you don't have a you don't have an, a, a, a husband or a boyfriend that you followed? I'm like, no, I just decided to go to Iceland. I didn't move for love. I didn't move for a friend. I didn't move for family. I didn't know anybody. I like to experience different cultures, especially with what I've grown up with. It's so, like, I'm so happy I had the childhood that I had because it just encouraged me to just embrace all different uh, cultures. I think I've said enough now. It's been a long video. Um, but anyway, I'm not currently in Iceland. I'm actually in England. That's why it, the sun is shining so brightly and it's, I'm wearing a t-shirt because it's warm enough to do so. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this story of why I moved to Iceland. The good, the bad, the ugly, the inspiring, the funny, whatever. I don't think it was very funny, but like, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do subscribe if you're not already subscribed as well as turn your notifications on so you know exactly when I've uploaded a video and follow me on all my social media so you can keep up to date with me. And I will finish off with an Icelandic word, Shaumst. And that means see you.